Good morning, YouTubians. It's Kimmy's ghost and daughter. Hello. Hi, and we're going to be doing the E's and the F's of our of my horror collection. And first one up is Eat Locals. Have you heard of this one? No. No, it's got uh, now. What was her name? I've forgotten her name. Annette Crosby. Annette Crosby, little old lady in the front with the uh, machine gun. Uh, yes, that's a huge machine gun. That's like a field army gun. That. It's also got Mackenzie Crook, and it's about a young guy who gets seduced by an older lady, cougar, some may say. She takes him back to her friends, which are all vampires, and unbeknownst to them, there's an elite squad of vampire killers on their way to kill them. So it's a big bloodbath film. I know. Eden Lake. Uh, let me know if you've seen any of these, these yeah. ones, because I do have some obscure titles, but this isn't obscure, this is quite mainstream. Kelly Riley. Michael Fassbender, about a couple away on a retreat. Sorry about the artificial lights, if you can see it reflecting my eyes. It's the light side. I've got a lot of lights set up. Anyway, getting back to this, Eden Lake. Yeah, these two, um, Fassbender and Riley, are on like a romantic, -y, uh, romantic sort of getaway to a remote spot. And obviously, it's not that good for them because they are set upon by a load of teenagers. <laughs> Nasty little scrotes. <laughs> Elfie Hopkins. I don't think I've heard of many of these. <laughs> no, uh, actually, this is not. It's not like a mainstream one. It's got Ray Winston, but more notably, you got Jamie Winston, which is his daughter. There's Ray Winston. Mm -hmm. Jamie, and it's kind of like the Burbs kind of thing. Her and her nerdy friend are obsessed with like watching like TV um, detective shows and stuff. And then someone moves into the neighbourhood, and they think you know they're up to something and and they're one of those a bit like the burbs you know one of those families i'm not gonna give the burbs away <laughs> oh recently watched the burbs loved it mm. the endless <clears throat> this is a limited edition so it come with a come with a book uh yes it did it's about um a couple of guys that get away from a cult and then years later they return to the cult because they think the cult isn't as mad as they first seemed End of Days, Arnold Sweaty Knickers. Um, this, I really enjoyed this one. This is um, about the end of days. Arnie is a New York cop. Pretty sure it's New York. I always forget, I always forget where they're set. And um, yeah, he's sort of fighting the devil. It's got some really, it's a real creepy bloke in there. He's uh, albino and he's just creepy. Turns into porcelain and on the tube station and smashes. And, ooh. Ooh, Jim Varney classic that does not look like a horror <laughs> well it's like a comedy horror it's jim varney he, he had like a set of films i do he's also got this one um ernest goes to jail ernest goes to camp um gotta get this christmas one if it ever gets released but this is uh he releases a troll on halloween all the kids have been turned into like wooden figures and he's got to save the day how'd you do yeah <laughs> event horizon um, a ship uh, appears out of a black hole. I think it appears out of a black hole. They follow it. I can't remember which way rain it is. It's quite it's quite a violent film. This one's got um, Sam Neill and Lawrence Fishburne in this. It's also got uh, Jodie Richardson. I haven't seen this for years, but I remember it being really creepy. It's quite a good ending on that as well. Mm. Mm. Existence. <laughs> Why'd you bring me here? <laughs> I know. David Cronenberg's Existence. I love this movie. It took ages for this to come out. It's only, it's only like recent. It came in like a big box set, um, which I did buy, but I don't keep the boxes with the films. I'll put them all in the attic. It's about a video game. It's like a, a um, like a virtual reality. They plug it into your spine. Like a, it's like a hole, a port in your spine. Plug the game straight in, and then you're immersed into this world. This gun here made of bones, it shoots teeth. Oh, it's, it's creepy. And uh, William Defoe's in this as well, as well as Jude Law. And who's the girl? Jennifer Jason Lee. Mm. Really good, underrated sci fi film, that one. Exorcism of Emily Rose. <laughs> no, see, you're all, you're all about these modern films. My dog is trying to get on my foot. There you are. <laughs> Set down. Based on a true story, is this the one? Yeah, oh yeah, I've seen this one. And it's based on a true story about uh, a woman that dies during an exorcism. And they put the priest on trial. 
um, saying, you know, like, uh, did he kill her? And um, it's all about the trial and, and sort of flashback thing. It's a good film. Very good. The Exorcist. A classic. Have you seen it? I have, yeah. Well, there you go. Hooray. <laughs> what did you think? I like it. I, I think, you know, it's it's the classic, like, quintessential horror film. Um, Do you think it would get an 18 rating if it was made today? No. No, I don't think so either. I think it would be like a 15 at most. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I agree. They've become a little bit more laxy-daisy now with um, yeah. ratings. Uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a good thing. It holds up to date. I think because it's got classic status. Mm. It's like a cult classic. Film. Yeah, exactly. The Eye. Zenith, Jessica Alba, she gets um, like a donor eyes. But uh, it turns out they're from a serial killer. And she starts seeing things that he would have done and I've not seen it but I hate that cover it's victims <laughs> yeah it's not a, it's not a cover really if you have a like an eye problem yeah, I, don't like I don't mean like a, a cis I mean if you don't like eyes yeah <laughs> <laughs> faculty no, no this is the one where is this the one with the oh, I've seen this for ages oh Elijah Wood it's the one with the the teachers are aliens or parasite the aliens if I remember, I remember the the way it's shot. Uh, it's the like the the tone of the film. I really enjoyed the tone of the film. It's, they don't sort of do that anymore. It's got Famika Jansen in this, and not being you know putting it across properly. What I'm trying to say. I like the <laughs> style of the film. That's what I'm trying to say. Fallen. Now, if I remember right, this is uh, it's got. Well, I know it's got Denzel Washington, and John Goodman, because I can read it on the top. But this is the one where it's a bit like a Chucky kind of thing, where um, a serial killer dies or a sociopath dies, and his soul goes into other people, and they start becoming like killers as well. It's one of those. I'm pretty sure it's this one's got Donald Sutherland in this as well. That's that one. We're really mincing through these. Yeah. Fertile ground. Look at that horrible cover. Oh. I've got like a hundred Blu-ray empty cases over there. I'm going to put this to one side in a minute and <laughs> give it a new cover. Get all that crap on the back. Oh my God, that's awful. I know, isn't it? <laughs> Fertile ground. I hate these covers. Uh, it's got like a snake going down the spine. I hate them. I really hate it. It's like only like a half of a snake. Mm. It just makes no sense. Anyway, I believe this is the one that's like Amateurville kind of thing. Family move into a house that's kind of haunted, haunted by the victims, and the dad becomes the killer. That sort of thing. Mm, classic horror story. Yeah, I mean they're all sort of um, sort of rearrange the same old story, aren't they? Really. Yeah. Building England. No, uh, you wouldn't think this was a horror film, but it is. It's a fifteen. It's about these people. Well, these old guy. What year is this set? It's like the English Civil War. Um, yeah, English Civil War. And they're sent on a quest to find some treasure. And they're eating... This is a magic mushroom film. They're eating these mushrooms, getting visions, and, and, and they're starting to wonder, are they actually after the treasure, or is it something else? All black and white. Hmm. You've I, seen these, haven't you? I don't know if I've seen all of them. I've seen at least one of them. I don't know which one, because they're all <laughs> the same story. What's, what's the one? Can you remember the story? Uh, I just remember the scene on the roller coaster. Oh, I think that's like two or three in. It's one, two or three. I think I've only seen the th first three. And I thought, no, I'm not going to buy any more. And then uh, I thought one day, yeah, I'm going to buy them all. So I've got more and I've seen... I saw this one again quite recently. It really holds up. Yeah. It really does. It's a really good original horror film. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of wish they had just left it one because I feel like it would have... Give it more credibility, but it's now just like, oh, there's... Now it's a series, yeah. A bit like the Saw films. They should have left that at maybe one, maybe three at the most. Yeah. Maybe. Really good. The story is, if you don't know, um, Guy has a vision of him and his friends dying on a plane crash. He makes a fuss, gets thrown off the plane, and then the plane does crash, or just blows up in the air, doesn't it? And then death comes looking for them because their time was up. They escaped death. And uh, they've got to try and cheat death for the second time, third time. Keeps coming around. It takes them in order that they would have died on the plane. Yeah. Second one. Is this the roller coaster one? Um, no, this is one with the 
uh, freeway, it says, motorway if you're in England. Big crash on the motorway, exactly the same thing. Someone has a vision in the car, waiting to get on the motorway, big pile up and and then death comes calling again. Third one. This is the roller coaster. <laughs> roller coaster, it's actually on the roller coaster on the cover. Um, yeah, same thing. I just exactly I, I remember thing. seeing that scene, the roller coaster scene when I was younger, and it like terrified me. But and what I like about this is the um, it's not what run in the mill. The really clever ways in which death comes for them. Yeah. Especially the first one, I think. And then you got final death, the final destination in three D. Uh, but I think this is the crappy one. Yeah, with bloody. Oh my god. <laughs> What the hell? I mean, come on. <laughs> so I must look for that now in real 3D. Wow. I know. I got that. Oh, finally found it in 3D. And then it. <laughs> oh. And then this one, I believe, is also available in 3D. But uh, I've not found that copy yet. Um, and I've got no idea what the last two are about. The title doesn't, I mean, the cover really doesn't give it away either. <laughs> no, Ooh, Final Girls. Um, Channel Don Star, he did a review of this years, a couple of years ago, I thought by now. And uh, he really ran and raved about this. And it is a good film um, about a, a screen, you know, a screen queen is, yeah? Mm -hmm. Her daughter sort of gets trapped inside one of her mother's old films. Hmm. Sounds all right. Yeah, it's like a. Uh, got com comedy elements to it. Final Recall, Alien Invasion. Now, if, uh, there's a film that was made a fair few, probably about 15 years ago now, called Fire in the Sky, story of Travis Walton. Should get a Blu-ray release, but if you really like that film, you'll probably like elements of this, because they do copy a fair bit of this, uh, a fair bit of that film, Fire in the Sky. In this, it's Wesley Snipes, um, he's not the best actor, but he's he's pretty good at what he does. I like this film. I thought it was quite good, and that was really cheap. That's like eight quid new. It's pretty good. Firestarter. This is uh, a Plan B. This has got all the bells and whistles with this. It's got little it's art not. cards. Oh. Yeah, I know art cards, a book, and all that sort of stuff. Um, you don't know Stephen King's story? Drew Barry, little Drew Barrymore, look at her. Oh. I know, her parents um, take part in this test and they uh, have te um, oh, what's the word? telekinesis abilities. That's what I'm looking for. And then they have a child who has pyrotechnic abilities. Little old, um, what's her face? Drew. Flatliners. Oh, I didn't know there was an old one. I knew the new one came out. Oh, have you seen the new one? I've not seen it, but uh, I've heard a lot about it. <laughs> so I've seen the old one, I've not seen the new one. Um, a story of a bunch of medical students and they decide to do an experiment where they kill you by just stopping your heart with uh, yes. you know, like, uh, chemicals and then paddling you back to life. Or do they paddle you dead and then inject you back to life? Either way around. So you can tell what was on the other side. Am I boring you? No, I'll just keep you on in. <laughs> well, yeah, what was on the other side of death? Yeah, it's the same. Uh, but then death comes for them again. Same story, and then other one as well. The message I'm getting is death is very vengeful. If, mm. you, if, they, if you cheat it, it comes for you. It must bring comfort to all those people that flatline and then come get brought back to life. <laughs> My God, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> if, if you're one of those people that you're going to be like looking over your shoulder, aren't you? Um, Julia Roberts. Kiefer Sutherland, Kevin Bacon, I don't know, Oliver Platt and William Baldwin. So it's got a really good cast. This is a great film, I think. And a lot of people, I hate that when you get little bits of plastic. I mean, do they put these bits of plastic in on purpose? Um, yeah, it was remade. Ellen Page, not the singer. The, um, uh, I don't recognise any of these other people. Do you? Diego Luna? No. Nina Nina Dobrev, Dobrev, I know who she is. She's mm -hmm. in um, Vampire Diaries, I believe. Yeah. James Norton? Nope. Uh, Kiersey Clemens? Clemens? I don't know. Who I don't know, I don't know any of those other than Ellen Page and you know the other person. Mm. Um, this did really badly. I yeah. Because they, the thing is with this one is that they did barely any like marketing for it. So when it came out, it was like 
nobody even know knew when it was coming out or yeah like, anything about it. And so. also, if you mess with an original, which a lot of people consider a classic, I mean, why? Why? I mean, I don't mind people making remakes and stuff like that, but I mean, good point this one mm. the fly and then the fly this is obviously i mean they left this long enough to remake it this was 1958 is that okay? even with glasses i can't see that look how small that is yeah 1958 <laughs> <laughs> i mean come on um yeah the fly obviously you all know the story of the fly but um i think that one has done very well Especially the... Um, David Cronenberg's got a knack for... Like, like odd. Monster movie type thing. Yeah. Creature feature. Yeah. He, um, the transformation scene in particular, when he's becoming the fly, is very good. Yeah. Blundell. Is it Blundell or Brundle? I can never... Blundell fly? I'm pretty sure it's Blundell fry, uh, fly. But where he's, like, he's a mixture of both. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Give that a kiss, would you? <laughs> Okay, uh, The Fog. The Fog. Have you seen this one? No. This I only watched last year, I think, for the first time. I th you know, I say I watched it for the first time. I could have watched it 10 years ago and completely forget about it. Yeah. This is the thing with me. I forget very, very quickly when I watch a film. And I've seen TV shows as well. You won't TV remember shows. a single episode. I won't remember an episode. I won't remember anybody's name in a film. I have to make notes. <laughs> I don't know. It's true. Don't I have know. to test you sometimes on what people's names are. And I mean, I could watch Lord of the Rings. We're currently watching, and you don't know. I can. I can. All I can remember is the bloke Negan. <laughs> you got Baldy. You got uh, Rhett. He's not. He's not Rhett, but he looks like a bloke called Rhett. Um, yeah, um, I could watch The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings tomorrow or today, and it'd be like watching it for the first time. I don't know why. That's the dream of like everybody, though. To just forget yeah. their favourite movies and rewatch them. For the some first I do time. remember, but some I don't. Um, John Carpenter's The Fog. I love this, but again, if I watch it tomorrow, it'd be like for the first time. Um, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis. I know who she is. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I thought she was really good in that. Some uh, interesting jump scares. I like the ending as well. It's the story of, in case you don't know, pirates. Um, they're treated appallingly by the local townsfolk, and a hundred years they come back for their treasure that the townsfolk stole. Mm. Come back in the fog. The forgotten. Now this is a film I remember, <laughs> oddly enough. Oh that gosh. title. <laughs> Julian Moore, Gary Sinise. Um, Alfie Woodard and Anthony Edwards Goose Goose from Top Gun and um, Mark Green from ER uh, it's a story of aliens take a woman and a, a husband's child away from them and uh, or duct them if you like but they try to make every every trace of the child disappear from their lives and see if they forget them over time it's that um, but obviously the mother doesn't very good film that's not actually there is someone else in there uh, uh what's his name he's not even credited on the back i can't think of his name gabriel Byrne. i'm pretty sure he's in this as well can't see it though no i'm pretty sure gabriel Byrne's in this the forest natalie dormer from she was what was she in uh game of thrones yeah she was in game of thrones about the spooky Japanese forest. Oh, right, yes, the suicide forest. Hmm. Very creepy forest, <laughs> I, yeah. We don't talk about um, Logan Paul, was it? Oh, was I was about to say, didn't a YouTuber go on about this and got like He He went discredited to or the forest and filmed a hanging dead body. That was what he did. And, oh, well, that's very nice of him, wasn't it? And laughed about it. So, yeah, it's very disrespectful. <laughs> Bloody idiot. Uh, that's the forest. I've not seen this, so I don't know how creepy it is. I should imagine it is creepy. But if you don't know about the forest, basically, it's a famous forest in Japan where a lot of people go to kill themselves. Creepy. And they just, like, all the bodies are just left there. Mm. Not a place you go for a picnic, then. No. <laughs> 1408. Now, we love this film. I love this film so much. Great film. John Cusack, a ghost hunter. Or, no, he's not a ghost. Well, he is and he's he isn't. A, he's like he's, a writer of 
haunted places. Yeah, he tries to sort of debunk mm. if there's a haunt. Someone came and they got a haunted um, inn, uh, motel, or something. Like that. He goes there to debunk it, really. Yeah. And uh, he gets uh, like a postcard, doesn't he? Saying, "Come to the fourteen oh eight room fourteen oh eight. We'll ask for room fourteen oh eight at this hotel. I can't remember what the hotel's called." Yeah, I'm not sure what it's called. Um, but he goes there. The manager, played brilliantly by Samuel Jackson, saying, look, I'll give you this bottle of whiskey. Just, just, just go. Like, you don't, know. don't stay there. Yeah, but no, he's insistent. And he goes in there, and the room has him. Once he's in there, the room has him. Yes. Very, very good. So and brilliant. you'll never listen to the Car- Carpenter's song again. Mm-mm. It's only just begun. <laughs> You'll never listen to it the same way once yeah. you've seen this film. It's massively creepy now once, you, <laughs> once you've seen it. Yeah. Uh, recently picked this one up. 47 metres down. Didn't get a UK release. This is from Germany. Uh, and then there's a sequel. And lo and behold, we didn't get that either. Um, I'm guessing it's some kind of shark. Judging by the picture of the shark on it. Yes, yeah, that would be. I'm trying to open it up so you can see the right glare. Uh, yeah, shark movie. They've been making quite a few recently, aren't they? Shark movies. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why. I don't know if there's like something recently that's made more people scared of sharks. But yeah. You shouldn't be scared of sharks. They've just got bad eyesight, and that's why they attack you because they think you're a sea turtle. Really? Yes. Well, maybe someone should get into the business of making them glasses then. <laughs> The fourth kind, kind of told through like interviews, um, made like a documentary kind of thing about abduction. The fourth kind, close encounters of the third kind is like meeting them. You know, your first kind sight or something. Uh, second kind, I don't know. They t- come and tickle you. Third kind, <laughs> whatever. Fourth kind is abduction. <laughs> I would hope they wouldn't come up and tickle you. <laughs> Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Old yeah, it is Boris Karloff. Um, Probably the best. Probably. Probably all have your own favourites, but yeah, um, he's the classic. Boris Karloff. What year that was? Um, <clears throat> it says 2012. I'm not buying that at all. <laughs> uh, 1931. 1931. I've got quite a few Frankenstein films, so we'll skip through them. Um, Danny Houston, Carrie Ann Moss. Good, got a good cast on that one. This should be under M, Mary, Shelley, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but it's Frankenstein to me, and um, I quite enjoy this one. A lot of people didn't. It's good, Robert De Niro as Frankenstein's monster, Kenneth Branagh as Frankenstein. Uh, yeah, it's very good. Very, very good. I enjoyed this one. If, um, and it's like practical effects. Which yeah. is good. I'm not a big fan of the Frankenstein story myself. Are you so. not? Frankenstein theory, and I've got Frankenstein's army, uh, which I should have put on the shelves, but, but I didn't see it. It must be somewhere else. Mm. Frankenstein's army. So that's those. I think you've seen this one, haven't you? Friends request. Yes, unfortunately, I have seen. This. What do you think? <laughs> awful film. Do not watch it. <laughs> it's really not worth it. It's an awful story, like really just basic, just to give you jump scares. Um, yeah, it's really not very well made. Uh, it says uh, Alicia Debnam Carey from The Fear of the Walking Dead and The 100. Yes, do you remember her from The 100? No. She's, <laughs> I saw uh, that. Lex, Lexa, I think her name was, the one that Clark fell in love with. She fell in love with everybody. The one on the grounder's side. She was like the leader on the grounder's side. Vaguely. Vaguely. She's, she's an okay actor actress, I think. She was like the one thing in that film that kind of saved it slightly. Fair enough. But it's very hard to save that film because it's not very good. Like, comment, kill. Don't do that at the end of this video. <laughs> Friday the 13th, Camp Crystal Lake. A classic. classic yes. A classic, yeah. Everybody's seen, well, everybody should have seen Friday the 13th. Mm. Um, yeah, who's, who's um, Kevin Bacon? Oh, he gets it good in this. I like it when Kevin Bacon dies. <laughs> I do. I don't like. I do, and I don't like him. Some films he's really good, like in. What was that film I was talking about earlier? Flatliners. He was good in that. Poor Kevin but Bacon. My I know. I'm sorry, but he's in that bloody annoying advert now. The e. E. Bloody. He sold this. himself out. Yeah, he's selling. I like this. I like this cover. Look at that. <laughs> Feels like you t- 
touch it. It's like the book from Harry Potter where it screams at you. Yeah, yeah, fine. And Peter Jackson, um, The Lord of the Rings, plus many other fantastic films. He did this, gets overlooked a lot. Michael J. Fox is brilliant in this. Um, Chi McBride, oh, it's just great. Um, Jake Boosie, he's a nut job, that Jake Boosie, but, and he is in this as well. He plays a, a serial killer in this. D. Wallace Stone, brilliant. I mean, the whole whole story is is out there. He's, in case you don't know, Michael J. Fox, he goes and um, he rids your house of ghosts. But unbeknownst to the people, he's he's a con artist. He has two, is it two or three ghosts with him? Uh, three. He has um, Chi McBride, a young nerdy guy, and an old like old guy from the wild west and um he goes in and rids them of his of his ghosts you know what i mean so he's he can talk to the ghosts but a serial killing ghost who has has unfinished work uh still wants to kill people from beyond the grave it's very good it's a really good scene in there <laughs> one of his one of his friend ghosts the old um old timer the old uh, cowboy he's boning this old mummy corpse <laughs> it's, just, it's a really funny film oh, so it's a comedy. Okay. yeah it's comedy horror uh fright night and it's an interesting fact for you chris sarandon who's in this he does a voice in one of the um studio ghibli films i'm watching princess man and okay mm. there you go um yeah um horror based uh, it's, it's a horror based a horror um, enthusiast his neighbour moves in his neighbours are, are killing vampires so he, he enlists the help of Body McDowell who was like a vampire killer on a TV show in the past mm -hmm. he enlists his help to get rid of him and then you have the remake here where you've got Anton Yelchin uh, who's passed away now um, he lives in a house and Colin Farrell or Colin Farrell yeah Colin Farrell is the vampire and who does he enlist in this to help him? Uh, David Tennant. Mm, that's a good cast. Yeah. That's also available in 3D. Frogs. I don't, I've not heard of it, but I absolutely love the cover. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? I love frogs, so maybe I should watch it. You'll probably like this because it's a millionaire or billionaire um, in a wheelchair, crippled. He moves into his big mansion and he hates anything that, that insects fogs snakes everything so he, he eradicates everything around his house oh, yeah but frogs. but they all um come from in the end nice. it's got nice. um Good. sam elliott don't know if you know who he is he's he always plays like a he's got a really deep voice mustache yes I have heard of sam he elliott. was in uh, ghost rider from dusk till dawn did i show you that cover put it in a green case from dusk till dawn i've only got the first one i've never seen any of the others quentin tarantino and um clooney george clooney is in this harvey Keitel was in this. see there was a girl in this uh juliet lewis it's a sort of a story of two halves you've got these two sort of psychopathic brothers who kidnap um they kidnap, they kidnap, they kidnap, they kidnap someone but that's irrelevant because uh, the story sort of changes because they go to this bar I think the bar's called. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it's, you've got to watch this to believe it because it is fun. It sounds it's ridiculous. It is, it, and it, but it's it's just really strange. You think you're watching one kind of film, and then it just it flips from hell. I love this film. It's from the Hughes brothers, and the Hughes brothers, uh, two guys, they are or were. I don't know if they still are. They were obsessed with. Um, the Ripper, old London town, Jack the, Ripper. Jack the Ripper, and they know everything about him. And except who he is. <laughs> oh, they have their theories. They do. Um, they're very meticulous. I mean, if you go into the extras on this, you'll see like the streets. There were windows in photographs, like the old photographs of like cracks in windows, and they've 
sort of recreated everything right down to the cracks in the windows. It's very cool. Yeah, it is very, very good. Very, very good. You've got Johnny Depp, who is Abernathy, and uh, who was heading up the um, the investigation. You've got Hagrid. What was his name? Robbie Coltrane. He's in this as well. Um, yeah, just very, very good. I like this, but I really like the story of Jack the Ripper as well. And then we have Frozen. Oh, Disney's classic. Yeah, let it go. Okay, this is. He should not let it go. <laughs> no, uh, I don't think he can. I'm probably stuck there. Um, Frozen uh, is about. I think it's three people, isn't there? Um, that is, they go on on those chairlifts. It's the last ride of the last part of the season, and then uh, the person thinks that the ride's empty, turns it all off, goes home. But it's like the end of the season, so they're they're stuck on this chairlift in the middle of like nowhere everybody's gone home in bitter conditions that sounds very like an uncomfortable film to watch yeah um so they've got to get out they've got to get to safety and obviously you've got like wolves and frostbite and just nastiness um to overcome so that is it um <laughs> your voice went very high then that is that <laughs> okay uh yeah so thank you so much for watching uh that was the E's and the F's, so obviously G's and H's next. I don't know Hopefully what's in there. I've seen more of those ones than this pile. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, we'll probably get into because you have, you have watched a lot of horror films, mm. but more modern, modern ones. Yeah. Whereas, if anything, I would have watched the the older sort of flies and fogs and things like that. Yes. And like the original flatliners. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. If you leave a comment down below, we will get back to you eventually. Yeah, you can I, type We in. both do it. We both answer the comments. Yeah. He answers them. I type them for him. So. Yes. <laughs> um, so we'll do that. If you give a thumbs up, I appreciate that as well. Click the bell in the corner to get notifications of further videos. And subscribe if you haven't. It's all free. All free. Don't ask for a thing. Okay. okay. Uh, on that note, I will say goodbye. Thanks for watching and take care.